in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. The Most High didn't have pleasure in it. That was only for a season, for a time, all right? But no, he said, I have to send forth my son to bring forth the new covenant, all right? So from there, because we was doing these things over and over, we continue to commit sin over and over. And with that, sin is what? Death. Right. You understand? So Christ had to come and basically on our behalf via the Father to establish that grace and mercy to the most high for us. All right. So from there, let's behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel mm -hmm. and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Which so he said, not of the old covenant, but the new covenant under Christ. That's what I'm established now. With who? The nation of Israel. Go ahead. Which my covenant they break. We broke God's covenant over and over and over. Go ahead. Although I was in husband unto them, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. Right. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, so, saith the Lord. Slow down with the house of who? Those days, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. No, with the house of who? With the house of Israel. With the house of Israel. All right. So the Most High established this second covenant with the house of Israel. No other nation but Israel. So let's get the new th new the same thing in the New Testament. Hebrews 8 and 7. All right. All right. It's just reaffirming in the New Testament. All right. Go ahead. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. And with the house of Judah. Right. So the most I said, I'm going to make a new covenant, which is the same covenant, but a new covenant, meaning under Christ. Christ ultimately came to do what? Take away us from sacrifice and to give us what? To adopt us back to the most high and give us what? Salvation. Right? Ooh. So every time we keep reading, what? His people, the children of Israel, that's who we come in to redeem. Christ. Go ahead. And have raised up in horn of salvation. Imagine you getting burned like that forever because you can't keep your dick in your pants. Christ had to come to redeem us by the new covenant. Look up on you like a thief in the night, and you might get caught up with the rest of everybody else that's going into everlasting fire. To do Christ's will was to do the Father's will, which was to bring about the what? What are we talking about? The old and the what? New covenant. New covenant, covenant. That was the will of Christ. Imagine you getting burned like that forever because you can't keep your dick in your pants. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, fellow, fellow laborers fellow followers of the truth, supporters of the faith, and shallow warm to the elect. So anyway, through the spirit, this video pops up and um, going into the uh, new covenant and the hell doctrine and how this is kind of a coincides with the Christian way, the Christian church doctrine, which proves that the IUI seed, Israel united in Christ with the name and the, the name of Christ and the hell doctrine and the new covenant doctrine and it's pretty much they just they put on another layer of the hebrew israelites on top of the christian church or the christian church on top of the hebrew israelites however you want to look at it but <laughs> this is crazy now we knew they went into the new covenant but now that we've exposed the hell doctrine how does this work with the new covenant because after all the Lord says as they read I don't know if I put that in there Luke 1 and 68 when it says the Lord have redeemed Israel well let me get that real quick that wasn't on the in the um, the cards so to speak let me get that real quick Luke 1 and 68 it says let me see here it says blessed 
be the Lord Yahweh of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people. Right? And it goes on to say, and raise up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Now, a part of salvation is to be able to, once you get saved or delivered, to be able to see all your loved ones that was wicked, that was evil, that went off, that the Lord blinded them because the scripture says the election have obtained it, but the rest was blinded on purpose. So the Lord blinded them on purpose just to throw them in a cast of a lick of fire forever. I mean, that doesn't make no sense, but we're going to go even further. It says to perform that we should be saved from our enemies in the hands of all that hate us to perform the mercies, the mercy promised to our father and to redeem his holy covenant. The oath which he spake to our father Abraham. So they kind of went into this. And uh, um, as Genesis 12 says, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Well, we did videos on that with Acts 325 the kindreds of the earth uh, going into the Israelites. But the whole point of salvation is to put the earth at rest. And uh, well, let me say deliverance and the earth will be at rest. Right. And it's not just going to be the, the uh, one third starting with the one third. Yeah. But all uh, it is not just going to be us. The, uh, the rest of the nation of Israel will come back and we will love one another again. Right, this is just the story that the Most High set up. He's not going to take your loved ones and throw them in a lake of fire, as I did a video yesterday on that, which represented a, a period of time because Gehenna, as the prophet saw it, in a valley of hidden um, of the um, uh, where people, you know, where the filth was burnt, which was a beautiful place at once. Uh, but anyway, I want to go here, John eleven forty nine. This is going to um, the uh, the chief priests and what they said, but this is what Caiaphas said. And one of them named Caiaphas being a high priest that same year said unto them, ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and the whole nation perish not. The whole nation perish not, right? And now, if you want to say, when Yahusha came, he obviously starts with the elect and then the whole nation, right? But if it wasn't for Yahusha coming to die for our sins, then we would have, where would the salvation come? Because we would have, Yahusha requires blood. So Yahusha, his son, was sent as the ultimate sacrifice. It says, and this people, in this, spake he not of himself but being high priest that year he prophesied that Yahweh should die for that nation right and not that nation only but also he should gather together in one uh, in one the children of Yahweh that were scattered abroad right because we were scattered amongst all nations that's why it says and not that nation only because you had a split right and the Israelites that were scattered is James 1 and 1. So it was all about the Israelites. But um, I wanted to go here and what that word nation means. It means a multitude. It's a company, troop, a multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus. Going to gene, genetics. Right? The nation, people, group, the human family. Okay, so it, it has different definitions. So again, we're going to get to the main the main part of this video. What I want to go into is uh, the Hebrews 8 that they only read a part of, which they do teach. Um, a part of it, I'll say they do teach, and we'll get into that in a second, Lord's will, in a minute. Uh, Romans eleven twenty six, And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. How would that happen if the two-thirds were going to be burned in hell forever? 
how the two thirds are going to be cleansed is they're going to have to die and then they're going to have to come back. So anyway, this new covenant with the hell doctrine is not making sense, but this is why they keep that hell doctrine and merge it with the new covenant because this is what the Christian church teach. Because after the troubles and the second death, they IUIC teaches that you'll be raised up and then you'll go burn and be judged and you'll burn in hell for a thousand years or eternity. That's what they said. It's either a thousand years or eternity. Which one is it? Right? Because if they stop after a thousand years burning in hell, then what? But then they say we're in the new covenant after Yahawashah came. So it's kind of confusing because when Yahawashah came and he died, and they say that activated the new covenant, when you're dealing with something new, you're dealing with something fresh, um, un, unblemished. When this new covenant is activated, there won't be all this wickedness that you see um, going on on the earth, right? In fact, let me get that. Um, let's go to Hebrews 8. And um, let me go to 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Now, when you're dealing with the house, you're dealing with the people. But for some reason, they're claiming that we're already in this covenant. And that he's making this covenant with them. So afterwards, in the new covenant, while we're in the new covenant, he's going to set the people ablaze, the two-thirds ablaze. In this new covenant now, right? That's what they teach. Uh, you know, that doesn't seem like the perfection of the Lord to me, right? I will make this house, uh, it said, I will, uh, I will make with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. So, if you was, and, and it goes on to say, and I will write them in their hearts. So, why would the Lord put his laws into our minds and write them in our heart? Now, this is being specific because the laws in our mind and write them in our heart, meaning we will be able to complete these laws, right? We will be able to do what is set for us to do in perfection. That's not happening in this time we are in. So there's no way we're in a new covenant. In fact, yes, Yahweh did, uh, we're covered, but they teach that while we in a new covenant, his blood covers us, right, for the for the remission of sins, right? But Yahweh hasn't come back, right? So he has to come back. He will come back. And that's when you'll get the start of the new covenant. Once this man is go, go down and we come up in power and he's able to write his laws in our hearts and minds. But Yahweh never finished. Why would he give you something new and still working on it? That's like saying, hey, I'm going to open up a nice new restaurant, but we're still putting the pieces together. We don't even have the windows in yet. Now, it has to be finished. They have to be new. It has to be clean and purged before we can do that. Your time and Yahweh time is totally different. Your time and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh time is different. So he hasn't finished. And this is why they teach that, right? He's he's got he's going to come back. This is a Christian doctrine teaching that yeah, when he died on the cross, that activated the new covenant, and we're now we're all fresh and we're all clean. Yeah, right. It goes on to say, uh, let me go up here again before I go for, forward. When he says, "I will make a new covenant," let's see what it says here. I never looked that up yet. See what it says real quick. Before I go down to the part that really is really not making sense for what these guys are teaching. Hebrews 8, I will make a new covenant. Say the Lord, behold, the days come when I make a new covenant. G2537. Uh, recently made fresh, recent, unused, unworn. Right, so we're going to be in a new covenant, unused, unworn. There's no way we're in a new covenant now, man. This is ridiculous. Of a new kind, unprecedented. You know, uh, let's look up that word, unprecedented. 
This is not making sense. And this is really dangerous because you're teaching that, you know, two thirds of our people are going to wake up out of the dust of the earth and then they're going to burn in fiery torment forever. But yet Yahweh is coming back to set the children of Israel right to even pronounce judgment because you guys don't even know if you're the elect. And then he says, well, I'll get to that point too. This is this is the part. Let's look up unprecedented. It says, um, pre precedent, right? Precedent. Uh, occurrence of something similar, right? Occurrence, but unprecedented. Okay, so let's go back to Hebrews eight and eight. It says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Judah, I mean, house of Israel after those days. And I will put my laws in their minds and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Who's this? Is this only the elect? Or is this everybody? All of Israel. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor. Now, I've witnessed another Israelite group saying this is talking about even later. They just actually split this up. And every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Well, this is all the form of the new covenant. This is all the new covenant. How can you take this scripture and say, Well, nope, that's not what that means. Or that's a later time. But the original, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. It doesn't even really say with my servants, the elect, but obviously the elect, but this is the whole house of Israel. Here it goes. It says, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins. Wait a minute. I thought we was all going to be, the two thirds was all going to be thrown in a lake of fire and their iniquities. Will I remember no more? Wait a minute. See, this is not adding up. And this is what I wanted to get to. Nobody, we will not have to teach other Israelites that they're going off. None of these things will happen again. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. So what are they saying? That this is talking about soon as Yahweh died? You know? But yet up here it says, well, wait a minute, not teach every man his neighbor. That's in the future kingdom, but this is something, to this is really confusing. Right? This is totally confusing, man. That new covenant and that hell doctrine does not link hand in hand because the new covenant speaks of all Israel shall be saved. The new covenant speaks, I will write my laws into their minds and their hearts. So if he did that, they would be fresh. It would be new. So you mean to tell me this is 2000s. You woke up to the truth in the 90s. Some, some men woke up in the 90s, the 2000s even 80s and 70s and we already had the laws written in our hearts and our mind or something or we just got them even though we got to go through this tribulation and all the hell and can't keep the laws to the you know that we should keep or that we can keep we're supposed to keep but for whatever reason you can't keep the laws but he done wrote them in your heart and your mind and your spirit this is weird but the people who don't, they're all going to be burning in the lake forever. But he says, I will uh, make a new covenant with the whole house of Israel. So anyway, that's a weird one, but that's their doctrine. And uh, I guess they would have a different way of explaining it. That's all I have on that. Shalom.